Icebergs are like the whale versions of ice, except instead of spouting water, they just chill there, looking dangerously calm. You only see a tiny bit above the surface, while the rest is hiding below like a frozen James Bond villain. It's like the ocean's playing hide-and-seek, and losing. So here's the deal. Ice is less dense than liquid water. Basically, when water freezes, the molecules spread out a bit, they take up more space, like socially distanced cubes. That extra space makes ice lighter than the same amount of water. Drop an ice cube in your drink. It floats. Now imagine that ice cube the size of a shopping mall. Yep, it still floats. Slightly more terrifying, but still floats. Enter our ancient Greek buddy Archimedes. He figured out hmm. this rule over 2,000 years ago. When something's submerged in a fluid, it pushes away, or displaces, some of that fluid. And if the object pushes away enough to match its own weight, it floats. Think of it like balancing on a pool float. As long as your weight equals the water it displaces, you're golden. Go over that, and splash. Now here's the not-so-fun part. About 90% of an iceberg's volume is underwater. That peaceful little white peak you see? It's just the tip of a frozen skyscraper. It's like spotting a single potato chip on a plate, and discovering an entire bag hidden underneath. Except, you know, it can sink a ship. That's what happened to the Titanic. Icebergs are basically silent sea traps. Huge, slow-moving, frozen ninjas of the ocean. They float so well, they become invisible disasters waiting to happen. So, why do icebergs float? Because ice is less dense than water. Because Archimedes was a genius. Because frozen molecules love personal space. Put all that together, and you've got giant floating ice mountains drifting around the oceans like they own the place. And kind of, they do. Next time you see an ice cube in your drink, remember, that's just a tiny, harmless version of something that could wreck a cruise ship.